Hi, I'm Heather from Arrow. Today we're going to show you how to assemble a Bertha sewing cabinet. Our Bertha cabinets come in three separate colors, oak, white, and cherry. Today I'm going to show you what a finished cherry Bertha cabinet looks like. There are two separate leaf supports to support the leaves on the cabinet. There is also an adjustable quilt leaf in the back that opens up with two legs and then slides to allow you to get support wherever you need it to be. The cabinet also features two doors with storage. It will offer center needle sewing. The opening will support a 60 pound sewing machine and is 24 by 12. Your Bertha cabinet comes in three boxes. To assemble your cabinet, you will need to gather your tools. A standard screwdriver, a power screwdriver is also recommended, mallet or hammer, 10 millimeter wrench and adjustable wrench, a scissors or box knife. In box one, you will find your manual and your hardware bag. Page two of the manual lists all of the hardware. Please note that the screws will be bagged with the parts they go with. Do not separate the screws from these pieces. Locate your bag of cams and connecting bolts. We will now show you how to install the cam. The arrow on the top of the cam should be facing the hole for the connecting bolt. As you place it inside the hole, you may have to tap it in place lightly with your hammer. Here is how to install your connecting bolt. Place it in the connecting bolt hole and screw it down. You will start with your seven wood pieces and 22 cams and connecting bolts, installing as follows. In the cabinet top, which is upside down, six connecting bolts. The back brace, I, four cams. The front panel, G, five cams. The shelf, O, four cams. The back panel H, five cams. Right side panel F, eight connecting bolts, two cams. Left side panel E, eight connecting bolts, two cams. On left side panel E, you will want to locate the bag with the insert hook. Take the insert hook, install it in the inside Locate the bag containing the door magnets, strike plates, and gold screws. On the front side of front G, you will install the two door magnets. Install the following pieces onto side panel F, the back brace H with the cams facing the inside of the cabinet. After you've inserted it onto the connecting bolt, tighten securely. Your next piece will be front G with the cams facing the rear of the cabinet and the taped edge down. Lastly, we'll put back brace I with the cams facing the rear of the cabinet and the taped edge up. Now we will add shelf O, installing it onto the connecting bolts and tightening. Take your hardware bag containing the large number eight by two and a quarter silver screws. We will be installing them onto the shelf to attach it to the back brace. Okay. 
With two people supporting the pieces, we have turned the cabinet upside down and we are installing the left side panel. There are eight cams and connecting bolts to be secured. Two of us carefully turned the cabinet right side up and we are now installing the top onto the base we have built. We need to make sure that all of the cams are tightened onto the connecting bolts. Six. Now we will work on assembling the hardware onto the doors J and K. Beginning with the plastic trays, you will need to gather the bag of the 32 number six by one half inch pan head screws, attach the small plastic trays to the pre-drilled holes, the larger tray is always on the bottom. Next we will install the door hinges. Depending upon your cabinet you will either have door hinge A or door hinge B. On door K we are going to install part M which is the door stop using the three number eight by five inch eight inch flathead screws located in the same bag where you found the shelf screws. On both of the doors, install a strike plate. This is remaining from the bag that had the door magnets. Now we will work on the leaf supports. First of all, we will attach two panels, R and N, the leaf support hinges. Next we will gather the bag with the two round magnets and insert the round magnets into the holes, tapping in place with a mallet or a block of wood and a hammer. Lastly, attach the self-sticking rubber tabs, which were found in the same bag as the insert hook. Attach them opposite edge of the round magnet, even with the front and outer edge. Your white cabinet will have white self-stick rubber tabs and the oak and cherry will have black. Now you will carefully with two people tip the cabinet onto its back, open and support the two leaves and roll it completely on its top upside down. Now locate your package containing your carriage bolts, washers and wing nuts so that you can install the airlift upside down. It is going to be attached with the four carriage bolts that you will push through from the back to front. Seat the bolt by tapping it with a hammer and secure with a washer and wing nut. Make sure all four washers and wing nuts are tight. The following instructions will help you level the platform P. You will need the styrofoam from the box, a sheet of cardboard from the box, a 10 millimeter wrench and adjustable socket wrench. Install platform P into the opening of your cabinet, making sure the pre-drilled holes are facing you. Locate the two metal wings and also the bag containing the eight hex head bolts. Take metal wings and attach them to the airlift carriage using the eight hex nut bolts four bolts per wing. Attach them loosely as you will tighten them down in a later step. The metal wings are placed on the inside of the airlift carriage flanges facing outward. Once complete, remove the styrofoam from the back of the cabinet.
Place cardboard strips around the platform P to keep the platform square. Make sure the platform has clearance on all sides. You may also want to make sure that the platform holes are lined up with the holes in the wings. Gather the four number eight by five eighths inch large silver screws from the screw bag and attach the wings to the platform P. Using a 10 millimeter wrench and adjustable wrench to tighten down the hex nut bolts on the metal wings, have a second person stand on the platform or press it down while tightening to prevent the platform from rising up. We'll now install the caster, so locate the bags containing your casters, a second bag containing the caster clips and caster inserts. Install the caster clip over the holes in the sides of the panels. Tap the caster insert through the hole in the clip and into the board. Now you can install the locking casters to the front of the cabinet, the non-locking casters to the back. Using a small piece of wood or perhaps your cutting board from the kitchen, place it between the wheels and tap with your hammer to seat the caster into the clip. Using two people, carefully turn cabinet right side up by placing the unit on all four casters. Using the number 8 by 5 8 flat head screws that were in the bag with the leaf support hinges, attach the leaf support to the left and right side panel. Your leaf supports are identified as parts R and N. The round strike plate and number 5 by half inch screw were located with the round magnets. You will now attach them to the outside of the left and right panel in the pre-drilled hole using a very fine Phillips screwdriver. The doors J and K will be hung using the screws that came with your type of hinges. It is helpful to have two people, one to support the door and lock the casters before you install. Last step on the door is to install the door knobs. Attach the bar to the bottom of quilt panel D using the four screws. Notice there will be two flanges rather than three. From the hardware bag containing the screws, your last four screws are the black one and a half inch tightest screws. They'll be used to attach the quilt leaf extension to the back of the unit. Using two people, screw the black tightest screw through the bracket into the pre-drilled holes on the back side of the Bertha cabinet. I'm Joe from Arrow, and I'm going to show you how to build your Sonatra sewing cabinet. The Sonatra cabinet comes in three different colors, black, white, and oak. It's one of our airlift cabinets with storage on the door. The airlift moves the machine in three different positions. And the cabinet comes with a universal insert. Your new Sonatra cabinet will come in two boxes. We ask that you open the boxes carefully, lay out all of the pieces, compare them 
with the diagrams in the manual. If you find any damage, please call us at 1-800-533-7347. Please lay out your pieces on carpeting to protect the laminate. Here are the tools that you'll need to assemble your Sinatra cabinet, your hammer or mallet, screwdriver, Phillips and slotted. We do like to use an electric screwdriver to make it easier. An Allen key will come with your hardware in case you do not have the screwdrivers. We also require the use of a 10 millimeter wrench and socket wrench. All your hardware is contained in a box. Within that box, you will find a large bag. Open it up. You will find individual hardware pieces. At this point, please do not open the smaller bags. You will find certain pairings of screws and pieces together. The last item in that box are the wings for your airlift. The first pieces of hardware that we need are our cams, there will be 16 of these, and connecting bolts, also 16. They are found in the main hardware bag. At this point, you can open this bag and separate all of these pieces. I like to use a plastic tray. Here we have all of our wooden pieces laid out. They are A through H. And now we will continue installing the connecting bolts and cams as needed on these panels. Now I'm going to install my cam into the cam hole on this panel. I press it in place, making sure the arrow on the cam is facing in the same direction as the hole through the wood. C is my left side panel. There are two cam holes at the top of the panel. D is my right side panel. Again, two cam holes at the top of the panel. E, the front has two cams installed plus two wooden dowels. G, the back brace, two cams plus wooden dowels. F, the back panel, four cams. You can differentiate this from piece H, the shelf, because of the two holes that are drilled in the center of the panel. And last, we have pieces A and B, which are the top, and they have four connecting bolts. We'll now show you how to install a connecting bolt in all of the panels. The next step after installing the cams is to put the connecting bolts into the panels. They simply screw in place in the pre-drilled hole. I just installed one on panel D. D has and C both have six connecting bolts. The additional hole on the side is for your wooden dowel. So we've used 12 connecting bolts on panels C and D. The last four are installed on top A and B. On panel D, we also have one additional piece of hardware to install. It is the catch magnet. It is screwed on with two screws that come in the bag with it, along with the metal plate and screw for the door. Be sure that you place the catch magnet with the metal strip facing out. Now we're going to start putting the pieces together onto our panel C, installing the front E with the wooden dowel and one connecting bolt. Make sure that you tighten the connecting bolt and cam together so that the piece is stable. The next piece is back panel F. It is attached to part C. Again, with the piece slid over the connecting bolt, and each of the two cams tightened securely. Now we have our back brace, part G. Notice that it has an unfinished and a finished edge. The finished edge will go up 
towards the top. This piece also has a hole for the connecting bolt to fit into the cam plus a wooden dowel. Be sure that you secure your cam and we are almost there. This is piece, piece H, which is the shelf, and it fits onto two connecting bolts right next to the back brace, G. Again, I have to tighten the two cams to lock onto the connecting bolt, and notice that they are facing down so they will not be seen when the sewing cabinet's opened. Now we're going to put the second side, which is part D, onto the assembled cabinet, making sure that all the connecting bolts and wooden dowels slide down into position. And then I have six cams that I need to tighten to secure. With my cabinet securely built, I'm now going to rotate it onto its top and take four of the caster clips and caster inserts and install them into the bottom of the panel. The caster clip goes over the edge of the board and the caster insert will be pounded with the mallet through the hole. You will have two different types of casters, one with the lock on it which will go on the front of your cabinet. The non-locking ones go on the back. Insert the caster into the caster insert. We like to use a wooden block. You may have a, just a scrap piece of wood at home. Or use one of your cutting boards to tap the casters in place. We don't recommend pounding directly on the caster as you might break the wheel. The next piece we're going to work on is the door, part I. You will have one large, one small plastic tray, two thread spindles. They will be attached using the gold number eight by half inch pan head screws found in this bag. You will use 16 out of 20 of these screws to attach this to the back of the door. You will find that in the bag where you took the magnetic catch, you have your catch plate and one screw that is also attached onto the door. And you have Door the original assembly video of the Sonatra cabinet, we have made a change to the configuration of the door. It will now open to the right hand side. That allows you to sit more center needles. And we have changed the hinges. There are now three hinges for stability. Your hinges will come in two separate packets in your hardware bag, just like this.